everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Fiddle. I am an artist, a crafter, and a miniaturist that likes to teach others that they can be creative too. Link to scavenger hunt, patterns, and materials is listed in the description box below. And please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment. It really helps me out a lot with YouTube's algorithm. Okay, are you ready? Let's go. Today is part four of our cold porcelain clay doll remake, where we're going to be coloring and stringing our bodies together. Before we get started on coloring our doll bodies, if we have any cracks, this is a really good time to repair them. Take a dab of water on the end of your finger and put it over the affected area. Then take some clay and put it over and then smooth the clay down. If the cracks are deep, go ahead and use your clay tool or your fingers and try to get as much clay into the crack as you can to fill it in. If you have any areas where the clay doesn't look right, after it's dry you can go in and sand it. As you can see with the hand, after I added the new clay, it really did make the hand a lot longer. So when it was finally dry, I went back and sanded down the fingers so I looked a little more accurate. As for dry time, I would recommend 6 to 8 hours before adding color. If you are lucky enough not to have any cracks, then you can move right on into coloring. And for that, I use chalk pastels to begin. I did have a few fluffy watercolor paint brushes, but a makeup brush would have been better. Quite honestly, in the end, for the most part, I used my fingers, then came back with the brush to even it all out. When I got to the torso, I did do a little bit of shading, so I pulled out a brown color along with a pale pink and, of course, the flesh overtone. I started with the dark shadow colors first, then put over the layer of flesh tone and the highlights on top of that. Okay, before we start on the head, make sure that you protect the hair, and I did that with a grocery bag wrapped around with tape holding it on. For this, stick pins wouldn't really work like you see in doll remake videos. It's because our head is solid, unlike those rubber plastic heads. If you want your eyes protected, cover those as well. I tried putting a piece of tape over mine and it did not stick no matter what I did. So I decided in the end when she was all finished, I went over the thread with a white paint marker. Once you have your hair protected, put down your base layer of flesh tone the same way we have before with either a finger or a brush. Once you've got it where you think it's good enough, we'll be doing the shading and finer details with colored pencils. If you are lucky enough to have any Mr. Super Clear, in between the chalk and the colored pencil would be a good time to put that. Unfortunately, I don't have any, so I went straight from the chalk to the colored pencil without spraying anything on it, and then when I was completely done with it is when I put my clear coat on. You do want to try to match your chalk with your color pencil so like where we did the shading on the body you would want to try to find a 
colored pencil that is close as you can get. Usually I say start with the center of the face and work your way out. This time I started with the mouth and then moved on to the cheekbones. I would still suggest starting with the nose. I think I did the lips first so I could decide on where I was going to be putting the cheekbone line. And the nose really is just shading the nostrils and around where the nose is attached to the upper lip. I also did shading a little around the eyes and along the hairline as well. And if you mess up anywhere along the line, you can always use a pencil eraser to fix your mistakes. Just make sure you go back over with the flesh tone first. Once you are happy with the way it looks, go ahead and spray it with some sort of clear spray. Leave for drying time. We're going to need pliers, wire, and our elastic. Make an eye hook in one end of the wire. This is what we're going to string the elastic through. The first bit of stringing we're going to do is through the first button. We're going to take the string through one buttonhole and then back through the other so both of the ends are coming out of the back of the button. Next, string the elastic through the outside hole of the left leg, then secure with tape. your tape make sure that you're wrapping it around both ends of your elastic so that way it doesn't stretch out of the hole then stick it through the torso to the other side of the leg and we're going to put the other leg on and make sure you're going from the inside of the leg to the outside of the leg here now we can add our last button we're going to go through the back of the button first and then come over the top and go back through the back Once you have your button on, stick your elastic end back through the leg hole and we're going to pull it as tight as we can. The easiest way I figured out to do this was to hold onto the leg with one hand and with the other hand grab a hold of the end of the elastic and flick the button with your finger and that will tighten it up slowly. It may take you a minute to get it there. When you finally get it as tight as you can, make sure you have a piece of tape on standby so you can do the same as you did before to hold the elastic in place. Now you'll need a bit of wire, it's a little on the late side, but this is a picture of what your, the end of your wire needs to look like, so we can stick the elastic through that hole. First we're going to string the elastic through the head. 
I already had mine done previously, but what we're going to do is bend our wire so we can stick it through the armhole up into the neck hole. You may have to bend your wire and get it familiar with the inside parts of the straws that are leading from one point to another. When you finally do get it through, go ahead and poke your elastic through the hole of the wire and pull it back out through the arm. Be sure to be holding on to the other end of the elastic when you start to pull it through, or you can use a binder clip to hold it, which works really well, a regular paper clip, or anything that would just hold on to the other end will work great for you here. Now you're ready to put the other arm on. Remember to go through the inside of the arm to the outside. The process from here on is very similar to what we did for the legs. Next, put on your button going from the back to the front. elastic back through the arm and secure it with tape. Right now we're not really worried about getting it too tight. We'll do that later. to attach the other arm and we're going to do this the same way we did the other one by going through the armhole with our wire to the neck opening. I was lucky and got the wire through on the first try. Put the elastic through the hook and pull it through. Okay, for this portion, I went ahead and strung the arm on and then the button right after it. It made the process a little bit faster for stringing the elastic back through the button. Now put the elastic back through the arm and we can start tightening up the joints. You do that just the way that we did for the legs, except for there's a little more wiggling involved. But what you want to do is pull as tight as you can. Don't pull so hard as you break your elastic and wiggle the head around so it makes the elastic inch its way towards the way you're pulling. When you feel like you have a good enough tension on the head to where it's not going to be flopping around, keep that tension to the arm where we're going to do it like we did the leg where you hold it up against the body while pulling on the end of the elastic and flipping the button. You may have to do the process a few times because each time that you do let loose of it, it kind of shrinks back up a bit and the head might come loose a little bit, so you'll have to retension it for that too. But after a few times of doing it, you should get it there. And don't forget to add your piece of tape on the inside. And with that, our dolls are finished. If you have made it this far, thank you for being here. If you wouldn't mind, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe because it helps me out a lot and I'll see you next time.